Good morning and welcome to Goldstream today on a beautiful day here in Holland L Beach. Brian Addle, Samantha Perry with you. As you can see, a fast main track, a firm turf course of Tapita as well. And uh, no rest for the weary here. It's Holy Bull Week, and that's a lot of excitement as we really, truly, Pegasus is behind us now. And what a day that was on Saturday. What a day it was Sunday as well with the rainbow. $1.8 million to what we think is three winners. But Holy Bull Week is here, and the path to the Curlin Florida Derby really gets going in earnest when we see the two-year-old champion on Saturday, Fierceness. Yeah, it does. It kind of feels like a little bit of deja vu with Forte yeah, last good year. Yep, but uh, it's still very exciting. Yeah, no doubt about it. We'll get to see a newly minted Fierceness as a three-year-old, a good group in the Holy Bull. Ben Tornado is back. Tom Pletcher's got a couple hot shots in the turf stakes as well. That card is already drawn, and uh, get a look at it. It's a really, really strong card on Saturday. A solid one today, too. The Rainbow Six, as I kind of alluded to you, starts a new today and we're going to have an estimated pool today you know i i would think it's going to be a pretty big number you know to start even though we start fresh that'll be in race number four seventy five hundred thousand dollars probably be in there they they, they fire hot uh, in this rainbow yep they really do and uh it's a beautiful day here today and good really day to, to fire a little chilly out a little chilly. A little bit, but uh, you can see the weather behind us. The sun is shining. We hope to see you out here on this nine-race card. And, of course, the early pick five kicks off in the opener. We'll take a quick look at my ticket. I lost a few top picks. I know you said you lost a, a slew yeah. of them, which is kind of a bummer, but it is what it is. An $18 ticket for me, short price in the opener, as you can see on the board already. In race number two, it is the two, super crunchy. In race number three, the six is on top there, double play king. Race number four, the one, Fontina. And in race number five, three deep, and the top pick is the nine, Texas Shuffle. That's a good turf uh, optional claimer for the Phillies and Mares. Chad Brown's got a couple that could be real nice prospects in there. But I'll go with the recency edge on uh, the Jimmy Toner trainee. $18. Samantha, the opener kicks off here. A couple of scratches. The five, Glossy Life. The seven, Mia More are out. It's a mile and 70 on the Tapita. These are three-year-old Phillies. $16,000 maiden claimers, a buck 70 on the Tapita. You are on the one uptown cat for michael Matz. well i double scratch double scratch yep okay. into the one here i don't really have anything clever to add about this horse because i really did like the five in this spot and uh it's a slight drop in class here the race two starts back was okay in an off the grass event uh i'm just hoping for maybe one of these races where she kind of cycles forward right well, you really don't like the two if you double scratched and still don't have her on top. Yeah. I just I just thought the maiden special weight drop and Irad Ortiz Jr. is here. Her form kind of looked like it laid over these, these this group. I would agree with that there. I, I think that there's a very, besides the, probably the one and the two, the rest of the field, there's kind of a big difference yes. between the both of them she was 58 to 1 last yeah. time she could very well be 3 to 5 today but uh, it is what it is after a few scratches the early pick 4 kicks off in race 2 on that firm turf course these are $35,000 maiden claimers 3 year olds in the spotlight here and as I mentioned early pick 4 in this field of 10 take a look at Samantha's ticket now yeah, and I felt like this was a, a sequence where you could maybe find some leverage. I've got my best bet in race number five, uh, just too deep here in this spot. And then in races three and four, uh, I lost a top pick in race three. I scratched into the six, double play king. And in race number four, uh, I've got the three. That's my long shot creative performance on top for Ralph Nix. And like I said, Delahaye is my best bet today. And like Brian mentioned, a, a couple of, Two Chad Brown trainees look pretty good in this spot, but I went with uh, Delahaye here. Yeah. And the second race could be – this could be tricky. Yeah, this could be the spread race uh, in here. Delahaye, very nice prospect facing winners today for the yep. first time. Uh, this could be the spread race, but just maybe Super Crunchy is getting loose in here. Yeah, and I, we have to feel a little more confident after the day that Mike Trometta had on Sunday. He wa he was here, which you don't see him a whole yeah. lot here. Uh, his assistant, Chris, does a very good job. And uh, Mike Trometta just leaves him be down here, and he was here. Two double-digit winners. First and last. First and last. He bookended the card, yep. One Ron Nicoletti was on the last one at yeah. 25 to 1. And Impressive. I hope we're not late to the party, but let's take a look at the stat because there are a couple other winners in this stat, but the two winners on Sunday uh, fall in here too. Four for 12 first-time turf routes at Gulfstream the past three years. Now here's Super Crunchy. 
Paco is here, Lasix going on. Uh, the dam's got a pedigree that she was kin to a few of them here, the Live Oak Homebred, and we're going to stretch out, and hopefully we're going to go today, and that looks like the plan here, and just might be able to get loose on a turf yes. course. Both horses wired in those spots, too. Exactly, and Paco wired in the last yep. one. So That Paco guy's okay. He's 25 to 1. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Zeno, the one, had a kind of an unfair beginning last time. But, I just, you know, you're going to take an underlay price here for Rohan, uh, Crichton, and Irod. Yeah, that's the thing. You're, you're just going to, like you say, you pay the tax. And the race two back was good as well because he uh, had to steady a little bit that day as well. So he needs, he's kind of been his own worst enemy. He's got to yeah. get clear sailing. And then, again, are these two both going to just go at it on the front end? Well, that's a p distinct possibility, too, especially if the one breaks. A amazing jet. Maybe I underpriced this horse at 3-1. to one. One, uh, or maybe I guess it'd be overpriced this horse. 63 to one, two back, went in for 50 on the turf. It was a really good effort, and she's he's now going to run with Lasix on the turf for the first time. Uh, I think this horse is a huge player in here. Yeah, that's true. And Edwin Gonzalez, it's good to see him get aboard as well. Yeah. He'll, he'll put the horse in the right I spot. I think so. And yeah. that could be just off the two inside speeds. Race right. number three, six furlongs on a fast main track here. Scratch out the seven, Dream Knight, who was going to be the favorite in here. So that takes a lot of starch out of this 3L6250 for four and up. Um, I do not, though. I do not scratch into the six, double okay. play king. You do, I think? I do, yeah. Okay. Uh, double play king for me, I I think the race he's coming out of is a is a good one. Uh, the, that winner that day, Slim Man, was for Sandino Hernandez. Yeah. Uh, they put the blinkers on. Uh, he's five years old. I feel like they're just kind of throwing something at the wall with that addition. And that the track that day I thought was pretty speed favoring mm -hmm. and front favoring. So mm, this is just uh, somebody's somebody's got to win, right? I hope. Yeah. Well, that's a, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think he's drawn well now that's with the true. scratch, and he's outside some of the other speed. Uh, you've got the three in second. That is Major King, major player, but just goes off the claim now for a barn that hasn't got a W this year. That's that's the concern there. But if you're right? just going to ride off of Jose D'Angelo's training, yeah. he's back in a couple weeks. So um, maybe. I mean, he did defeat Double Play King last he time. He did two for twenty-one with nine seconds as a. Kind of a bugger to me. <laughs> yeah. uh, what well, one more score? Um, really woke up on the tapita last time for Fernando Abreu. Uh, if he takes to the dirt, the rest of these could be in real trouble. Yeah, but you just look at, and I get now he's with different connections. So yeah. uh, read into that what you will. But those dirt efforts up in the northeast were dreadful. Not good at all. Yeah, I don't know. Ooh. I agree. He does have a couple wins, but it was a different lifetime ago. So yeah. be careful here. Irad is here. So, again, you take an underlaid price on a horse that we're not necessarily sure where his form right. is. Three down. That means six to go when we come back here on Gulfstream today. The Rainbow Six starts anew in race number four. And uh, they're off. past performances with one best-in-class product you now get all three past performance formats easily switch between views access the most trusted information in horse racing with drf all access past performances go to drf.com and use coupon code one free pp for a free single card today And welcome back to Gulfstream today. Brian and Samantha with you as we kick off Holy Bull Week. Huge card on Saturday, culminating the 12th race, the last race, the Holy Bull on the path to the Curl in Florida Derby. And with a lot of connections, hope is a Kentucky Derby as well. None more so than fierceness. We've got all week to talk about that. But we've got right now to talk about the Rainbow Six as it kicks off here in race number four. And again, it's going to be an estimated pool today. Seventy-five, dollars $100,000 I'll throw out there. But it starts anew after the huge, boy, did they send it in oh, uh, yeah. on Sunday. Over $5 million fresh new money. Let's take a quick look they at my ticket. took some of our monies as well, didn't they? Some of our monies, yes. <laughs> took some many, many of our monies. So we'll take a look at it now. Um, yes, we did not. Uh, if you're 
I'm going to I'm going to dispel well, the we're, myth. We're here today, so we did not we hit did the not rainbow hit for, six. For trust eight. me, this guy would be out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you, I did not hit. We did not hit for the one eight. But we'll try today on the playbook here. Forty three, twenty, and uh, there was a. I lost a couple top picks in here as well. Uh, in race number five, I've just got the gang there. Delahaye, as Samantha said, her best bet. But I actually I like Texas Shuffle a little bit. But those are the three in there. Best bet is actually in race number six, and that is the eight, as you can see there. Grand Soiree, three by three interior double with my long shot to six Princetown in race seven. Big scratch in there as well, though, unfortunately. Race eight, a good one on the turf to the seven Meyer. Marty Drexler rolling. Oh, yeah. Like we told you he would, and we haven't bet one of them yet. So, <laughs> And in race number nine, Adios now the two for Kathleen O'Connell. Try to get her going a little bit. Uh, scratch into that pick. Unfortunately, 43-20 back to the fourth race here. Seven furlongs on a fast main track. Samantha, sixteen thousand dollar maiden claimers, three year old fillies going at it here. And you, did you say long shot? Yeah, yeah. All right, Ralph Nix is back. We haven't seen him in a little bit. He's been quiet, but he's been white hot too. Yeah, he has. And you know, the thing with this filly is the two turns. Maybe they wanted the distance in her. Uh -huh. or, uh, for sure, they wanted the grass, and they ran her anyway, which I think was was a good move just to right. kind of get the fitness levels up a bit. But the dirt race wasn't a bad one. The second place finisher that day came back to mm -hmm. win the next race. She didn't make a huge impact, but I just think that with a couple of these starts under her belt, she's plunging to the bottom now. Maybe we'll get something. Yeah, and you got a barn here that has done nothing wrong since literally the first race of the championship right. meet, and that's good to see. We like Ralph around here. Uh, there's nothing clever with the one Fontina or the six Castellana. We'll show you the race last time, but what I am going to show you, I know the, the draw is not ideal. Fontina, t to me, well, Castellana was loose and controlling uh, in here and, and couldn't get it done. Um, I just question. This is a January 4th race, and then she came back last time at 60 cents on the dollar uh, and couldn't get it done. And I think, you know, to me, I want Fontina out of that race. She added Lasix here. Ronnie Spatz has had a very, very good championship meet. There, there's nothing clever about either of these two horses, but I do think – uh, to me, they're cut above the re at least right now. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I'm spreading in my ticket there because yeah. I don't really trust either of them. Maybe if you're trying to split hairs, the six is drawn to the outside. Well, I think that's a big deal. Listen, by cut above, that doesn't mean there are any great shakes either. So. No. And probably one of the reasons why you're going with a long shot right. here. Late pick five kicks off in race five. It's a good one here. A mile and a 16th on the turf. These are Phillies and Mares four and up. An optional claimer. Long shot scratches are the one Rosebud's Hope, the three Bramble Bay, and the seven Starship Aurora. We'll go with your ticket, and then you can talk about Delahaye as well. Yeah, this is my, my best bet of the day, so just ripping off the Band-Aid early. Uh, the one I do have on top, Paige Audu, in race number six, race seven. Uh, the seven on top, that is Tuscan Gold. Old race number eight. Uh, these are the two races I felt were tricky. This is a, the marathon, a mile and three eighths on the grass. Uh, these are hard races for me to get a good grip on. Uh, I feel like they're very jockey races. So I do have Meyer on top. And in race nine, I scratched into the two. Adios now. $32, yeah. $32. And as uh, we've talked about, Samantha's best bet is one of the two Chad Brown runners in yeah. here, and that is Delahaye. We're actually going to show you replays of both of them, but uh, let's show you Delahaye's maiden win at Aqueduct. It was impressive at 65 cents on the dollar. It was, and she was coming off of a pretty lengthy layoff, too. She debuted here at Gulfstream, and uh, she ran very, very well on the comeback. She drew the rail. Uh, she's the one, and she just got to the outside here of War Princess, who did come back to win uh, for trainer Todd Pletcher. There's there's not a lot about this race except for the fact that she ran really big. I mean, look, she put the rest of the field to sleep yeah. there, and look at that separation between the rest of them and, and her. I thought she was very, very game, and I think to kick off her. Now, she is going to be facing um, – she faced three-year-olds and up last time, right. but I feel like this is maybe a deeper group than she faced on Maiden win. There's no doubt about yeah. it. I mean, yeah, now you're facing winners ag ag again and some real horses in here, and one of them to me is a nine Texas shuffle. I thought ran very good last time behind Be My Sunshine, who comes right back to win right. Tropical Oaks here for Safi and Ken Ramsey uh, on the upswing for Jimmy Toner, and I think this one has got a – 
edges on both of the Chad runners yeah. and that she has recency and that she's proven uh, against winners. Delahaye's got the recency problem, party on girl. Delahaye's got the winner's problem, party on girl. We'll show you her now. She's got the recency problem. Hasn't been out since June 11th. This is the race, first time in the country off a long, long layoff back in May. You see the dub silks there. It's just not a good trip, Samantha. No, and you can see sometimes when these horses come over from Europe, when it's a different type of aspect here the racing and uh, yeah Flavia and Pratt that day got her covered up but she was still pretty rank and just kind of fighting wherever she was covered up between and I think that's, that's a big, yeah. yeah big difference in being covered up and now she's going to try she is going to run on late to her credit thank you Bob good job here you can again you can see the pink and yellow so she's going to level off nicely you draw a complete line through the June 11th race there was a spill in there and then a lot of horses had trips and, yeah. and that kind of thing we're not going to get into that but she's running on here um chad got going a little bit last week boy francisco clemente was good winning the stakes and mm -hmm. he looks like a real comer for the barn um again i just thought maybe with uh, texas shuffle uh, you know here and, and already performing take a little bit of a shot but yep. both of these horses and your horses now with three scratches could be bet very very strongly exciting two horses to see here yeah on the ground. So late pick four kicks off in race six. I'll tweet that out. It's just a run back of the rainbow. And this is a mile and a 16th on the Tapita. Four-year-olds and up the tag here, $10,000. You are on the inside with Peja Du, who uh, I assume you will not have to look too hard to find. No, I'm just hoping for a sin mission here. And the non-winners of three level last time, sometimes those can draw more strong than the, the mm -hmm. 10,000 level just opens. I, I don't know if that was, I don't think that was one of those races, but what I liked about him is uh, he came out of those, the Tapita sprint and then Paco just took initiative and sure. just went for it, hoping for the same thing here today. Yeah, I mean, he's loose. My best bet is in here, and that is the eight grand soiree. And one of the reasons is, oh, well, he's off the claim for Safi Joseph Jr. He's the only other, I'm not even going to call him speed, but he's the only other horse with a hint of tactical speed. Yeah. And I would assume Edgar just puts him right off the hip uh, of Peja Du, and we hopefully get first run off the far turn. Stubbed his toe a little bit last time, but Safi off the claim is very, very strong. Yeah, it is. And I think if Safi's reaching in for a horse like this, it's yeah, a good sign. I like that too. Win 99 is the class. He gets a little bit of a drop. He'd be absolutely no surprise in here. Caught a good one last time for 12.5. Yeah, he did. And uh, he is the class. And he finally got to this level. And this was his. This is his spot now. Exactly. You look at the last two times he's been in for a tag like this. He ran off the screen three back. He was a good third last time. Steve Badu does a good job, yeah. uh, underrated job with a limited sample as well. Race seven, a mile and a 16th. Dennis will be out there with the short stretch finish line filming this one here. It's a maiden special weight for three-year-olds. The five bail us out, one of two Pletchers in here. He's out Saturday? Yep. Saturday for mm -hmm. him? Okay, we'll see him Saturday. Um... Okay, you're not uh, on either. So we'll start with you. Tuscan Gold, I mean, we can't see him, but, boy, he looks like he's been working up a storm at Payson for Chad Brown. Yeah, and his uh, stable mate, Sierra Leone, is on the Derby Trail yep. right now. I, I think really highly of Sierra Leone, and uh, that race just proved to be a key one because we had yeah. change of command come back and win two races here. Uh, Sierra Leone was second to Dornick in the – Remind me the Remsen. Aquid the Remsen, yes, uh, with a 91 buyer. So, again, that just shows how strong that race is coming back here. Uh, right now, Sierra Leone's my early derby pick, so I'm hoping Tuscan Gold can, can be there. Maybe. All right, you heard it here first. Um, <laughs> Unfortunately for you and anybody out that wants to play this source, you lose a lot of value with, with bail us out. He's probably going to get chopped in half. But uh, he does look like a nice prospect. He gets Lasix as well. Mm -hmm. And I think most important of all, he gets a second turn right. to work with. Let's show Skip the line here last time. This was, this was weird. Um, Todd added Lasix on a horse that never ran an inch. So he's back there. Watch. Uh, Irad is, like, already asking him to keep up. He can't get this horse in the race. You're going to see him. Good stuff here, Bob. You're going to see him already kind of shaking him up here. Like, keep in contact with this field right here. He's like, come on, we're, we're, let's go. We're, you can really see it here. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, here he comes. And he gets in a world of trouble here. Yeah, this was very odd. Yeah. And uh, this is almost, I mean, this is, he, he steady so bad. Mm -hmm. And he's running in spots. He took a ton of kickback. He probably didn't like that at all. Uh, this was a very, you said it, just a weird race. We watched this together on the set. And 
and I think I had made this horse like 12 on the line, and he was bet. So I said, well, what's going on here? He ran very, very well. Yeah. Uh, he was never going to win. The winner's okay for, for Bill Mott. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Maybe he's just one of those horses, work in progress or light bulb kind of horses, but it did seem to go on a little it bit did. when they hit the turn. Yeah, it did, and that's good. Maybe he can build off that foundation and uh, hopefully break and be involved a bit yeah. earlier on. So we'll see what Irad can, can get with him here today. My long shot's in here. Let's show Princetown, guys. Uh, he, This was the Born Noble race, and we get to see him on Saturday, by the way. What a race that'll be. Um he didn't do much running, but I saw enough here, Samantha, right here for about 10 seconds. I thought he made a little nice little move, showing some professionalism, threading through as a first-time starter. I remember you saw him. He was kind of a big, like, giant mm -hmm. strapping son of Spitestown. I'm, I'm expecting – bail us out is out. We're going to see him uh, on Saturday. I'm expecting more today. Yeah, and by more, I hope you mean less, maybe shedding off some of that yeah. baby weight. Uh, yeah, the, the race fitness helps so much here. He is just a, a heavier horse, and he's not the most athletic either, but this was, like you said, a, such a huge race right. by the winner. Uh, this is a horse that they, they can build off yes. of that, but if you don't see an improvement today. Agree. Yeah, tread lightly. Agree. He's my long shot, and he is a, hopefully will be a price now, uh, yeah. even though a big scratch in there. Again, we see him on Saturday. Race 8 kicks off the late double. Mile and three-eighths here on the turf. It's an optional claimer for the four-year-olds and up. Scratch the one Lorenz, the six Mo Vanishing, two horses that were hardly impossible. I always did have the seven on top. How about you? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Meyer. Meyer, yeah. Marty Drexler comes – here and uh, sometimes his horses need a race or two to kind of get under their feet and now he's starting to really fire but I feel like this is a horse that he ran December 3rd it's not yeah. like the, he's been away for that long and uh, he certainly loves this distance yeah and the turf races are, are big and they're at Woodbine night and day different course I, I, I know that but he's got enough tactical speed to stay in the game in yeah. here this is a wide wide open race the two scratches take some starch out of this race and certainly some value uh as well but we'll see what we get there and then the straight exact again i lost nothing in here actually cyber ninja boy i don't know if he's going to need a meltdown samantha but he's going to have to hurry he will he will indeed but i think he's flattered a lot more now with the francesco clemente race two back yeah. uh, that puts him a, a big player here but yeah he's going to need something to run at i think francesco clemente who we saw saturday winning the mcknight is probably on the precipice of being if he isn't already the best long distance marathon yes. turf course horse we have in this country yeah. for for chad brown uh straight try here harry hood harry hood's got speed and he ran well at a mile and a half last time yeah he really did and mark hennig we talked about this on sunday his horses they, he's been putting him in right spots. It's just there's just been one or two things that just isn't putting him over the top yet, but they're running very well. Right. You know what the stat, the number is now on Henley's Joy? What is that? 34 starts, 2019. Wow. Last time he won a horse race. Uh, yeah, what do you do with him here? Put him in fourth. There you go. Irad, Mike Maker, you're going to bet this horse, but he hasn't won a race in almost five years with the grade one Belmont Derby. How about that? That seems. Uh, yep. Yeah. yeah. You were still riding horses? Back? What were you doing back then? <laughs> yeah, I okay. think so, yeah. There we go. <laughs> Not Henley's Joy. <laughs> Not Henley's Joy. Uh, race number nine, we'll wrap it up here. $25,000 maiden claimers on the Tapita. We go five furlongs, scratch the five. He's a butt. Butte, excuse me, in the eight, <laughs> Team Travis. Uh, just an extra E in there. Uh, two horses that were going to take money. I lost my top pick. Did you? I did, yeah. It was. Who was it? He's a butt. He's a butt. He's a butte. He's a um, butte, yep. Scratch into the two. Adios now. Uh, the Roan race wasn't that bad, No, actually. he's the best horse in here. Yeah, right? yep. So that just puts him second best. He, I, I wouldn't say that the steady inside was that big of a deal would you no but what i will say uh, about him uh he did get a really nice trip that day the two horses he were stalk he mm -hmm. was stalking were last and second uh so he got a trip still couldn't see it out but yeah that, that's tough and again that's why we we scratch into him yeah. but uh he's got 
room to improve, especially against this field. Uh, stat with Cassie and Irad here on uh, Cloak and Dagger, the firster for uh, those two. It's not a big sample. Just one for 10, though. So you would think, you know, hey, I got Irad. We're live. We're ready to roll. Not a big sample, but just one for 10. Yeah, and this is an interesting horse. I didn't see any works on this horse. There weren't any. He's been training at uh, Mark Cassie's farm, was here for one work, then right. went away, then was at Churchill before that. Uh, I haven't gotten the rundown on this horse, but I think it's a good thing to see him sprinting other than yeah. like two turns going long because well, DJ stables are, are not afraid to to lose one and, and they're not afraid to run one you know where they belong well DJ's got what 2,500 wins because they put horses in the right, right. spots right and yeah. I would think that's where, where this one's supposed to be we'll, we'll just see he's got a slew of works not that we can see any of them but yeah. uh, got a slew of works tote money would be good on this this horse here right. of course with the two scratches on horses that was going to take a lot of money everything Gets knocked down, so we'll see what we've got there in the finale around 4.10 in the p.m. But before we leave you, of course, lightning round time, and as we do each and every Wednesday. Now, we'll check out the standings. Yeah, and I can imagine that uh, they don't look too much different no. than, than last week. No. Let's let's take a look at we it We got here. Uh, Irad and Paco separating. Oh, Irad's up 10 now. I did not realize that. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's uh, – I, I read had a day Saturday. They had five. Five, yeah. yeah. So Paco's answering though. This yep. isn't over, as, as the great Rocky Balboa says. It's not over till it's over. Rocky said that. He did. I'm pretty sure. Um, okay, Rocky said Rocky that. Rocky said it. Yes. I kind of feel like that might have been De Dennis Yogi Berra said that about 20 years before Rocky did, but possibly. I don't know. <laughs> no Yogi Berras. No. No. Okay, we'll work on that. For my uh, time. <laughs> trainers. Yeah, the trainers. Please. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I feel like the trainer standings, uh, you know, Savvy's got the numbers here, and we say this a lot. Uh, he's just been doing incredible right now. But look at this podium. Mark Cassie is up with 16. Brian Lynch yeah. is still answering as well. This is very competitive. I think Brian's run 35 horses. That's yeah. remarkable. It is. It's very impressive. Tumba Rumba now, stakes winner. Yeah. Grade three winner. You know how many times I picked that horse last year? A lot. That's the answer. A lot? Yeah. I think he got it done for us at Churchill one day. So that's yeah, good. I think you're right. All right. Here we go on this payout. I mean, it's it's seismic. I think there were three people out there. Um, my goodness. Yeah. Massive. Uh, yep. I, uh, yeah, that, you know, it's interesting because the, the, the starting off leg, five title forces, we were like, oh, no, I think I, there was a collective, oh, because mm -hmm. I think a lot of people spread that race, but don't worry. <laughs> he was a favorite. He was the favorite, and you still got paid out. Wow, that's yeah. That's good, um, good money. You know, that that's why we do it this way, and they bet over $5 million, and you have a chance for a lifetime score, and that is certainly one of them, uh, no doubt. The racing office did a tremendous job putting together an awesome sequence. And, yeah. uh, hey, we'll start anew today and run it back pretty shortly. Friday, right? Uh, yeah. Giveaway. Cool T-shirt. Yeah, very cool T-shirt. Uh, you can get it in Silk's uh, 85th anniversary T-shirt giveaway. Look at that cool print there. Always good to have a T-shirt. Your best bet today? I think so, too. It's Delahaye. Oh, Delahaye. Yeah, That's in right. race number five. I am a grand, grand soiree. Is that uh, race number six or race later? Your long shot? Uh, creative Ralph, performance. Yeah. Yep, Ralph Nix in race four. All right, and I am in race seven with Princetown. Mike will get knocked a little bit with a big scratch yeah. of bail us out in there. We'll see him on Saturday. Boy, we've got three-year-olds in the spotlight all week. I mentioned, obviously, the Holy Bowl and those graded stakes races Saturday, but we said Born Noble, and it's going at it with a good Safi horse on Saturday. Yeah, too. it's going to be a very fun day of racing. An incredible card here uh, on Saturday. Twelve of them for you Saturday, but nine of them for you today. Pete Aiello is upstairs with the scratches and the changes. We'll be right back for the opener in about ten minutes. Happy to have you aboard.